This is all about every time I have a chance to speak to two or more people, I do it. Okay? You notice my name's on the door? Uh, I'm the guy who discovered Augie. Does anybody know who Augie is? Yes. Augie is responsible for this space. Okay? I'm the guy who discovered him. Little story, if you didn't know this. The little party upstairs in Union Street. He's there at the end of the party. It's midnight. Everybody got to leave. He's over there. Uh, it's just, you know, maybe he's had too much to drink. It's that orange hair, August, and the jacket, and the scarf. So I go over there and make sure he's okay. You got to know August. Yeah. Are you okay? You know, you all right? You got, you know, do you need a ride home? We don't want you to. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Well, maybe I need to talk to him a little bit. So what do you do? Well, I'm a genius. Uh, excuse me? What, what did you say? Well, I'm a genius. <laughs> so we talk a couple of minutes. I said, you need to come in and talk to me Monday morning. So I show up at 9 o'clock Monday. There he is. Comes in. Long story short, set him up in the offices, paid his utility bills, paid his back credit cards, paid his salaries. 24 months later, he sells his company for $23.4 million. Now there's a lot of stories in between, like the good news, bad news stories that he kept coming in with because uh, he was supposed to pay me a little bit of money. But Augie has been fantastic with his community. He said, okay, Karen, you made a little bit of money off me. Now you have to support the rest of it. By the way, I have the, uh, down, uh, the uh, downtown tech center. I've had that for almost two decades. Uh, Josh Greenberg came to me and said, from Grushark, and said, Ken, we need to do the founder's pad. That was Josh's idea. And Augie said, you got to do, I'm doing hacker house, you're doing hacker space. <laughs> Here we are. And I understand absolutely nothing that you guys do. <coughs> I have lost a ton of money with companies that I've started with you guys, but I've also made a lot of money. One of the first ones was a drug interaction program. We were in 75% of all the uh, pharmacies in the country. Two guys came to me with an idea, supported them. I was the, uh, when we sold out for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 plus million dollars, I was the uh, uh, CEO, no, I was the chairman of the board. Not smart enough to be CEO, but. So I'm running against a gentleman who doesn't believe in, well, let's say he wants to close the education department of the federal government. Doesn't believe in evolution, doesn't believe humans have anything to do with climate change. Uh, anything he believes in, I'm, I, I believe just the opposite. Uh, I am very much in favor of research. That's what you guys are doing. You're creating tomorrow. You are creating tomorrow. That's what I'm all about. I have created more than a thousand jobs on the east side of Gainesville. East side. Not here. He said. Then I came down here, created probably a couple of thousand jobs here. I brought a lot of money here to keep our unemployment low. Got the best workforce board in the, in the country because we thought outside the box as a businessman. I want to do that with the whole district. You're looking at the guy who, who generates more solar power than anybody else, including the utility companies in Marion County. I used to do that here except I convinced everybody in this county that it was a good deal, so now I'm not, I'm just a, also ran. I generate more electricity than for, probably for 200 houses. If you go in my parking garage, there's free electricity for any electric car that goes in there. If you go to Ocala, got a building down there, it's free electricity for anybody who's got an electric car. I'm trying to encourage it. That's where we need to go in the future. So, you go out in these surrounding counties, I'm saying let's bring solar to this area. Augie, by the way, has a solar project to move the panels. Okay? We're trying to do a, uh, a uh, beta on that out in one of the areas for the homeless. But uh, there's no reason this district couldn't be the solar capital of the South. 
I mean, this is a sunshine state, for goodness sake. All right? Now, I'm doing it as a private citizen. What if we had a little bit more help from the government? Problem is, nobody takes that leadership. Nobody sees that vision. I mean, you can't just, okay, we're number one in the South. It takes years to do that. You've got to set it up, get it to the hard work. Well, I did it here. You guys, nobody's old enough. Just checking. Twice. <laughs> twice. <laughs> Are you sure about yeah. that? Yeah. It's like motorcycles. Check twice. Yeah. <laughs> when I came to downtown, the property tax base had been flat for 25 years. We had 27% of all the crime. All these buildings you see here, number one, they didn't exist. All the rest of them were empty. There were no trees. There were no brick sidewalks. None of that existed when I came along. Tax base is now 800% higher. Now, uh, leadership and vision. It's a lot of hard work, okay? Which, if we can do that, a little leadership and vision to get everybody else doing it, we can do this with solar. There is absolutely no reason we don't do it. Prices of solar plummeted, okay? So, you go to Putnam County and say, I want a job. There are no jobs available in Putnam County. None. Zero. What if we take that new port that's in Jacksonville, bring all the raw material in, bring it down the railhead that goes through Stark, right down to Hawthorne. We create an assembly plant, do a little bit of manufacturing. We'll bring the cost down even more. We can put this on schools. Schools? How are you going to put solar on schools? You know, that's, excuse me, I have four systems on four different schools in this county today. If we put it on all the schools, first of all, it's shade. But you know the difference between standing out in the shade and underneath? Shade. That cuts the utility bill inside you know, before we generate any electricity. What happens if we generate all that electricity and the school no longer has to pay so much in utilities? Our property taxes go down because they don't need as much money. Anyway, I wasn't going to run for Congress. I'm a businessman. I know they're going to take a bunch of mud and throw it at me. I'm putting off my advertising a little bit longer before, you know, so because it'll come. So believe about half of what they say because I'm a developer, I'm a builder, I'm a bad guy. Okay, yeah. But I'm trying to do the right thing. The only reason I ran, do we have any veterans in this room? Any veterans? Thank you for your service. When I got out of the service, they threw eggs at us. I'm a Vietnam veteran. So, sit in my office, people say, oh, why don't you run for office? Right, that's crazy. Why would I put myself through that? One of the veterans came to me and said, Ken, you got shot out in Vietnam, yeah? Ken, you lost people in Vietnam, yeah? Ken, you saw some people get hurt bad in Vietnam. Yeah. Can you know people who've been in that situation have nightmares? Yeah. You have those too? Not as much, sometimes. Can't go to the wall without crying. So the folks who are in office now are cutting the budget back for all the veterans. We have post-traumatic uh, post syndrome. They're cutting the budget in half. These are the guys with mental problems said, nobody who hasn't been under fire will understand why we need that help. We need somebody like you in Congress. Before that person left my office, I was in tears. Of course, I had to get my wife's permission because I can't do anything without my wife. But that is the true reason I'm running is because of veterans. The other thing is, we need to support this. NIH, National Institute of Health, Folks up there are cutting their budget. They don't believe in research. It's nuts. That's what tomorrow is. We have to bring those dollars down here to help the university and help you guys. Because you're the future. I'm just an old fogey. You know, I'm going to go up there for one term, maybe two. But that'll be too old. You know, crutches getting out of there. That, that's why I'm running. If you know anybody, who cares about this community, please tell them to vote for me. And I, by the way, I do sneak down here every once in a while and sit in the back and listen. 
still don't understand me. <laughs> but I'm a businessman. I got a PhD in, in uh, business. And uh, by the way, I was in the military for seven years, two years with the Special Forces in uh, Jacksonville, in the reserves. Jumped out of perfectly good airplanes and uh, was military intelligence. I s commanded a spy plane. And I was an intelligence agent on the ground by myself in Syria, Lebanon, and Egypt when there were no embassies, nothing like that. I was on the ground doing that intelligence work. That's because I was younger and stupider. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. Anybody got a question before I run out of here? I just came from a fundraiser. Yes? What do you think of Amendment 1? Amendment 1. You know what Amendment 1 is? Solar. Okay, we just passed Amendment 4. So we get to put solar on top of our buildings. Amendment 4 is the utility companies don't like it for good reason. They spent millions of dollars against it for good reason. So I'm saying vote against it, but understand that the folks who put that in there have a good reason for it because now my systems that generate more electricity can go into competition with the utility company. The utility company does have a monopoly and we're trying to break that. But they have all the wires in the ground and they have all this other stuff and investment so they don't want to lose that profit and some of that's based in logic. What I'm going to try to do is go to them and say let's don't fight each other, let's figure out a way to work together. I have been meeting with the head of GRU here. Uh, Monday, I have a meeting with uh, the Ocala Regional Utilities, uh, uh, FP&L, which is planning a huge uh, solar field down in Marion County, is going to uh, talk to me about some of the things we can do to work together instead of fighting each other. Fighting is more, so more it's fun that gets in the newspaper. But. So with, if we do a lot of solar all over the place, the, the thing that I watch with the utility companies concerns, and the portion of the concerns I think are reasonable is, right now, we're paying for power, but also for all the maintenance of the grid. And so if everybody's making their own power, all of a sudden, the, that flow of cash that the grid maintenance used to be taken, taken out of, that goes away. In your perfect world, how do you, if everybody had the generation facilities in their house, how do you think it would work to still have a grid? Because we would still want a grid. Well, some, some places you would, some places you don't. There are places in the, in the world that have no grid and they're completely off the, off the grid. But you're kind of right. But if you think about it, peak loads. Solar in Florida, peak loads, sun's out there, and, and they don't, the utility company doesn't have to fire up the uh, Deer Haven or fire up their gas fired place, which in one place, it costs them $110,000 just to crank it up. The other one is 10. They don't have to crank those up because the solar is leveling that out, leveling it out. And guess what I pay every month? A minimum charge for that service. Sheets on all the publications. Well, oh, sure. They they only show you the side that they want to show you, right? Yeah. They, they don't consider the fact that they don't have to put other uh, generators online. They don't have to keep them on standby because of solar, right? They like to talk about the unpredictable nature of solar because we have a lot of clouds and rain and whatever. Right? And that's 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 but, realistic. But it's realistic, but it's also predictable. With the radar system we have, you can tell exactly where solar farms are going to go down. Which is one of the things I'm talking to the utility company about. It says, okay, cloud comes over and you've got all this generation and it disappears or slows down. That's something that somebody at the University of Florida should get a grant to study and figure out how to balance it. Well, they right? actually already have the models available. Yeah. They do that, but California we're trying to, you know. Doing it for years. Well, the difference is in California is the utility companies own most of those uh, generation things or have power 
consumption agreements. But we're trying to mix the facts with the detail, you know, the details. Mm. Yeah. But yes, it's a fight, and, we're, and I'm going to try to to figure out how we can work together to make this because it's coming. It's solar's coming, <clears throat> and when Tesla, excuse me, Elon Musk, I drive a Tesla. I love it, and I provide free power in the garage for anybody who drives an electric car. <clears throat> if he gets the batteries down. And the battery prices, the cars have been coming down. If he gets those down so that I can use it in my house or my commercial buildings, now that excess production that I use, I can use at night. It will, level out it will le really level it out. And I'm going to work with a utility company so we can resolve a lot of those issues. But that's a game changer. We get the batteries. There's somebody locally who's doing I want to say cryon storage. Um, anyway, it's where you store power with some other stuff. And the concept is proven. It's just not cost effective yet. But that's the kind of research p folks in this community are doing. And that's the kind of research. Elon Musk has proven that electric cars work. I think in 2025, we won't be making anything but electric cars. I mean, my car has what? 30 moving parts in it. It's faster than the fastest drag racer. They got a, they really literally have a button on it that says insane. You push that button and you pull a couple of G's. A friend of mine has one. What is, he's, a, he's a pilot, but gee, the, the blood rushes to the back of your head, your stomach goes to the seat, but you push that. Why? Do you, it's a high performance car. And there's 30 moving parts. I don't ever have changed my oil. I don't, you know, I change the tire. No, I rotate the tires. And it's a battery sitting on four wheels and a big computer. Oh, the computer crashed, you know what I do? I park the car, push the steering wheel like that, thing goes off, comes back up, it's reset. Oh, another problem, I call California, they fix the problem long distance. I'm all on board with your goals and everything, but how do you think you can consensus build in this terrible polarized atmosphere? What I'm planning to do and what I'm proposing for this area for jobs, what, there's other jobs things. I could care less about Congress. Okay? You, you gotta get it done. I, uh, the resources are available here. Somebody just, for solar and for nature trails, I mean, we've already got a nature trail connecting everybody in my thing in these outer lying districts. We've already bought it. My opponent says all the money that's tied in for paths and bikeways and things like that comes from the Department of Transportation. Every time that comes up, he says only for roads, nothing for trails. You know how many jobs will be generated when we get bicyclists to have a path that they can travel down there? or nature walkers. We have a rich history in this, this area. People will come to these areas. We'll open up bread and breakfasts. They'll eat at the local dineries. We just have to connect that trail. Or we've been sending that money back to Washington. It's, it's not fine. Somebody up in Washington gets it. But we don't get the money. And I tell you what, you look around this room, we probably send a lot of money to Washington. I don't have any qualms about getting some of it back. That's what we did. When I started this project, I got $2 million given to the city to jumpstart downtown. And we, there's, a, there's money to do it. Now, let me tell you how I really feel about Washington. Okay. When I went to Vietnam, I didn't go there as a Democrat, representing the Democrats. I wasn't fighting for the Democrats. By the way, I'm running as a Democrat. I didn't go there fighting for Republicans. I went there for America. And when I was in Vietnam, I truly believed that. I really believed that. And I think that's what we're going to do now. I'm not beholden to any special interests. I don't need them. I'm going to go up there not to support the Democrat Party and their positions, or the Republicans. I'm going to go up there and try to do it for the for the American, for the ideals. And it's like John McCain. 
There's some a person which my opponent also worships. He says that John McCain's not a true American hero. John McCain's a Republican. I will tell you, he is the most American hero you'll find. I have been through some of the training where they buried me alive in a 55-gallon drum. And I knew they were going to come dig me out. I knew it. Mentally, I knew it. But when you're sitting down in that drum, all upside down, right there, and you don't hear anything for a minute or two or five or however long I was down there, I don't know, you panic. He went through there believing he was going to die. When I was in Hanoi, I asked the guys, there's a big monument, Jeez, it's bigger than this screen, of John McCain. I said, why do you have a monument in North Korea? I mean, North Vietnam. He said, because we think, we respect him, because we tried to break him mentally, and we tried to break him physically, and we couldn't. He is a true American hero. He's a Republican. I'm a Democrat. I'll say that as long as I can. Having experienced it. You ought to do some of that stuff. Take a log. Bend, your, bend down, put your knees on it. See how long you can balance on that log. I was the youngest captain in the entire military. I joined when I was 17, went on active duty when I was 18. Didn't have any money. It's poor. It's, went to Vietnam when I was 19. They selected me for my leadership ability to go to infantry OCS. Went to Viet, uh, 82nd Airborne Division. Jumped out of perfectly good airplanes. I was an intelligence officer, like I said. Uh, spent seven years in, experienced a heck of a lot, jungle expert, survival schools, uh, done all that. National Security Agency, you guys know who the National Security Agency is? That's what I did. Listen to your phones. Broke codes, I'm a code breaker. So uh, when the Russians invaded Czechoslovakia, I was a duty officer and I sent the message back to the United States state president saying the Russians are coming, the Russians are coming. For you younger folks, it was a movie back in the 80s. <laughs> you remember? Okay. Oh, I, I, anyway, a lot of time. Jokes, anything? Can I tell you people, your friends, go online. Um, my dad was from, from uh, Chicago and the thing was vote early and vote often. Yeah. Here it's contribute and contribute often. So. And I am uh, personally matching every contribution anybody makes. So if you want to try to break me, go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for you guys. I support this. I love it. I come down here and it just, you know, it just amazes me some of the stuff. And the, the, the breadth of things that you guys work on. What is this? I, what is this? I understand the mask back in the back. That's that's my style. But any other questions? Okay. Thanks. Appreciate you giving me a few minutes.